Hey, what's good, everybody? All right, as you guys know, I'm JB Gunner. This is um, The Legend of Teardrop. Now, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the towns in and kind of give you my story in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. As I alluded to in a previous video, it was not one of my best hostile stays. Um, I don't know if you guys ever got a chance to see um, Hotel Hell with Gordon Ramsay. Well, they did an episode uh, on this particular hostel, and I didn't know that going in. So anyway, I get there. Um, let me go ahead and give you the basis of the story. Well, I left the ATC, and I fully intended on, you know, hiking towards uh, Sam Garvey. Well, so I I get to past the St. John's Episcopal Church or whatever, and it was police tape blocking the path down there. And so I had to go around. And what that did was it had me walk through Harper's Ferry right there on um, that street, the main street or uh, whatever it was called. Well, anyway, so I then saw a pub. So I said, you know what, I can go in there and get me some lunch real quick and then I'll head out. Well, the pub was closed, the bistro, but it had a sign pointing next door, and it said, there's a cafe over there. So I said, okay, cool, I'll go get me a hot cup of coffee, and then I'll head out. So I went next door, right? And uh, anyway, it was the minute you walk in, it's a hostel down in the um, lower region, very cold, uh, only a couple beds in there. So I was like, you know, this, my intentions were not to stay, obviously. So I go upstairs. And then there's this old witch-looking lady. But she was really nice at first. Really nice. And so I'm talking to her. She sold me on a cup of coffee, no doubt about it. But then she started telling me about the temperatures and 40-mile-an-hour winds. And she's like, you really probably should stay at the hostel. So it was a $35 hostel, and I really don't like prices that high, particularly when I haven't even, you know, this early in my hike or whatever. So I was kind of against it. I said, let me go drink a cup of coffee and think about it. Well, she came out there, and she's continuously telling me about the weather. Anyway, I'm Googling this shit, and I saw that she wasn't lying. She wasn't just trying to sell me. So I, I agreed. All right, I'll stay tonight. And that's what I did. And I was going to stay the next two nights, and I actually did stay, I think, the next night or whatever the case may be. Anyways, so what had happened, to make a long story short, my stay there was okay. But there was something I noticed in the kitchen that everything was frozen. All the food they were serving was frozen. So I did not choose to eat there. Um, everything was being recooked. And I, so I chose not to eat there. Now, later on, when you watch the hotel hell, you'll see why. But anyway, so I went to sleep and I woke up about three or four in the morning. So I went outside and um, went outside. And smoked, came back inside, and I broke out my AWOL guide and started planning my next week on the trail. Well, anyway, she comes down about 3.30 in the morning, right? And she said, uh, well, first of all, I was listening to YouTube on my phone. Now, granted, it wasn't that loud. I was, I was the only person there. So she was like, um, we don't want electronics being heard throughout you know, in the middle of the night. So I said, no problem, not, not a problem at all. I'll put my headphones in. I didn't know they could hear it upstairs. So at that moment, she's not in the wrong. I'm in the wrong. So I gladly obliged her on that. But then she says something that was really weird. She's like, oh, and there's no smoking in there. Now, that's fine. But I, I, I informed her, I said, I didn't smoke. In fact, I, I mean, I didn't smoke in here. I went outside to smoke, like I always do, that I don't even like to smoke in my own home. Uh, I perfectly get it. I'm not smoking in your home. Your, you know, anyway, so I said, no, it's not a problem. Well, anyway, at that moment, she chose not to believe me. And so at that moment, we kind of went, it wasn't really no real back and forth, but I assured her. It was, I was not smoking. Uh, sometimes the smoke comes in on your clothes or whatever the case may be. But anyway, she's real sensitive to the, to the smoke. So I understood it even then. I didn't like being called a liar, but I understood it even then. So it was over. Done. So it says that the cafe opens at 6 o'clock, right? So I went up at 6.07, right? And I essentially, she wasn't there. So I came back downstairs. 
Well, I started to come back downstairs. And so the cafe wasn't open, but she came over and said something to me. She says, is there something you need? I was like, no, I was just checking to see if the cafe was open. I was going to get a cup of coffee at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm considering going ahead and heading out. Uh, but she said, oh, fine, I'll open the cafe just for you. And when she said that, I, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm looking at her, and I'm like, um, you advertise it open at six o'clock. Don't worry about it. You ain't got to open it just for me, but that's kind of a rude thing to say to your customers. You know what I mean? Fine. I'll open up the business just for you. I was there to patronize your company, your, your, your business. It makes no sense to me. But then she goes and says it again. She says to me, she said, you know, if you smoke again in here, I'm going to have to kick you out. Now I'm pissed. I said, lady, I do not smoke in your establishment. I do not wish to smoke in your establishment. I don't even smoke in my own establishments. And I said, I'm getting the impression that you don't believe me. And she said, I don't. She said, I've been here 14 years, blah, blah, blah. And I've never smelt it that strong. Okay. Now I'm kind of pissed, right? I said, lady, people only lie to people if they fear them. I said, I don't fear you. I have no reason to lie to you. Let's get make that shit clear. I have no reason to lie to you. If I smoked in your establishment, I would look you square in your face and say, I smoked in your shit. Now what? But that's not what happened. So we kind of went back and forth there. And I wasn't going to stay again. So I drank my coffee. Everything was good. Really weird situation. So anyways... I went back downstairs, continued my planning, packed my shit. I was going to go. Anyway. So she came back down to me later and once again, elaborated on the weather and how I needed to stay. And I flat out told her, I was like, listen, I'm a customer. I said, I'm paying highly expensive rates here. I'm your only customer. And I said, just to be perfectly honest with you, I don't like being called a liar. And she said, no, no, that's not what I was doing. I said, lady, you brought it up three times and I told you that I didn't do it. So you either believe me or you don't. And I said, when I asked you, do you believe me or not? You flat out said no. So you flat out said that I was lying to you. And I said, now that you want another $35 and particular, possibly even 70, which is not even that because there's tax involved. So it's actually $40 a night. So, anyway, she convinced me to stay. So, I did stay. So, there was no other issues for the remainder of the time. But what that incident did is it caused me to Google her. So, I Googled the reviews for this place. And that's when I found that Gordon Ramsay had been there. And they had done hotel help there. I ask all of you to go check those episodes out prior to going there. Because nothing's changed. They still freeze the food. They still, they still do all the shit that they did in that place. In that episode. Even though Gordon Ramsay helped them. The place is a very... You're down there in the bottom. There's no heat. It's only space heaters. Okay? Only space heaters. And that's in the entire facility. This lady lives there. Um, in her office. There is a... It's a lot of weirdness. And when you, the more you talk to her, the more you realize she's just kind of old and out there. Um, but I can see why she's not looked upon highly. She's not, by the rest of Harper's Ferry, they do not, you know, I went and had dinner at the restaurant uh, slash pub across the street. They don't like her. Um, there was a hiker doing work for state there. He didn't like her. Um, there was literally nothing about her that was friendly to the hikers. There was a real weird thing, and she nickels and dimes you to death. She charges you an expensive price for all of those crappy frozen foods. You, listen, we're talking about a lady that buys rotisserie chicken from Walmart, you know, those little $5 rotisseries, and then freezes them and then sells them back to you. I'm not bullshitting you. So, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, my advice is don't go there. So even if you're hiking in this winter and it's the only one open in Harpers Ferry, just we'll go forward to Ed Harvey. Do not go there. She Half the shit that she sells in there has dust particles all over it. There's bugs places all over the place. 
it's just not a good place. And I'm really hoping she sells it. I looked it up and the value of the property is about $350,000. So I really hope that one of you or per possibly even me steps in there and buys this place. Harper's Ferry kind of needs it. Um, but all right, so I'm back now. Uh, sorry, I had some shit I had to handle. All right, so back to what I was saying is that I really hope that somebody, you know, essentially steps up and purchases the towns in. Um, you know, little, little bit, a little tidbit is I was actually going to purchase a hostel last year um, in Georgia, but I ended up not not doing it. Uh, but you know, so. I think the new ownership, because it's a perfect location the town's in. So even though this is a negative review, um, it's not the location. Um, but however, if people go to town's in, it will make their Harper's Ferry experience seem a little bit poor, uh, so to speak. So anyway, my final review on this thing is it's a not even a one. Well, man, let's go one out of five stars. Uh, I would not recommend it. I hope that you guys choose somewhere else. There's two other options if you're going in season. So I would definitely recommend you do it. Possibly go to the T-Horse um, or the Harper's Ferry uh, Campground and Hostel or whatever the fuck it's called. But anyways, so anyway, sorry I just split this video up in two things. Things come up. But, uh, and it was supposed to be posted yesterday, but it's going to be posted today. I apologize. But anyway, it's time to hit the trail, y'all. I'm actually heading back out. So, a uh, little bit of an update on that. Well, I'll just do a whole nother video updating that. See y'all later. I'm out.